Hello everyone and welcome to Tapping Into Your Creativity in my studio today. We have an incredible artist joining us today, um, Gretchen Warson. She's going to join us um, any minute now and um, she's going to tell us all about her incredible abstract contemporary work that she does. She is there. Hi. Hi, Gretchen. Welcome to my Thank studio. You. I'm so excited that you're joining us today. This is fabulous. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for asking me. Of course. I'm a huge <laughs> fan of your work. And um, we didn't know each other before this interview. And we've gotten to know each other just a little bit. And um, I think that we'll be friends for life. And it's just That's nice. Just it's, it's really nice for me to be able to make new friends uh, nowadays. It's incredible the, um, the amount of artists that are joining us in this great cause. Mm -hmm. um, we are trying to make a lot of money for Feeding America. And uh, that's the whole purpose of this COVID project of mine. So thank you so much for being a part of it. I'm super excited. Happy to, happy to. I've been excited all day. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. So tell us a little bit about, um, first of all, tell us your name, where you live, and uh, what kind of painter are you? Well, I'm Gretchen Warson. I live in Westford, Massachusetts. Um, I am an abstract painter, um, primarily large scale. I do like to do some small things too, occasionally, but um, Right now, I'm just like, the bigger, the better. So I'm having a lot of fun with that. <laughs> yeah, so I live with um, my two teenage daughters and my husband and a Bernice Mountain Dog and two cats, so. Oh my goodness, and you find time to paint in all that chaotic, cool experience that you're living in? Yes, um, I just do it when I can, yeah. <laughs> Yes. Are you finding yourself uh, painting differently or affected by COVID right now? What, what is, is anything changed for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, you know, as artists, we're alone a lot of the time anyway. So the social distancing, you know, and just staying at home um, or home or wherever we're alone in studios um, is not that part is not super different, but having the kids home um, all the time is definitely a little bit more, it's not more challenging, it's just more like, um, I just have to be a little bit more innovative of when I grab time for um, getting into my studio by myself. I'm sure you have to juggle the kids, and I heard one had an AP exam yesterday, and that's yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just being there for them is, you know, my top priority. But um, they're, you know, they're so self-sufficient at this age. They're um, 14 and 17. So they're, they're doing great. <laughs> so. so tell us a little bit about your background. I find it fascinating. I know you were born in Maine, in yeah. rural Maine. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, my parents, when they were pretty newly married. They moved from California to, well, my dad's from Ohio and my mom's from California. And they moved as sort of part of the back to the land movement in the seventies to rural Maine. And it's funny, I just looked at a, um, an, a photo album a couple of months ago where, you know, my mom wrote our Maine experience. Like they thought they were going to be there for maybe a couple of years. And I think it's been almost like 45 years that they've lived in the same house. Wow. Um, yeah, so they bought um, 25 acres of land and an old farmhouse, and that's where I grew up with my two younger brothers. And um, so they decided um, after they had me that they wanted to start a school. And um, so they started an alternative education school, um, and they had a building on their property. It was actually an old chicken barn that they <laughs> that they converted <laughs> into, a, into a school. And... Um, the school is called Toddy Pond School, and so that's kind of like where I get the name of my business. Um, there's a, there's an actual pond near my parents' house called Toddy Pond. And it's good to know because people, you know, they don't yeah. know that your actual name is actually Gretchen, right? And it's not Toddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
yeah, so that's sort of my roots. Um, my dad had converted the barn portion of um, the house that I grew up in into a metal smith shop because he actually for a while wanted to be a full-time well he was a full-time sculptor and so um that's so that's where you get your artistic you got it really young and you got a taste of it very very young and i'm sure it was encouraged absolutely yeah there's a long line my grandmother um i i dug up this picture i can you see can you see that okay that's my grandmother yeah. oh wow she was a she was like a painter and a dancer and that she made that costume <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> so that's my dad's mom so like yeah there's been a long line of um and my uncle's composer like my mom is very very creative she runs a bookstore like there's there's a lot of creative people in my family and um so that's been yeah creativity was really encouraged growing up and when did you figure out that abstract um expressionism or non-objective art was your path to follow uh, you know, that's a good question. I, I think in college is when I sort of switched over from realistic um, painting and drawing. Um, I spent a semester in Rome, Italy in my junior year. And um, I think that's when I, you know, when you're pushed out of your comfort zone, I mean, being in college is one thing and then to be living in a different country. I think I really had a lot of time to think and a lot of time to sort of explore. And it was a full art school as opposed to the liberal arts school I had been going to. Um, so they, so there was many more, I felt like there was a, a real encouragement of exploration at that time. And um, I had a couple of teachers that just gave us some assignments to try abstract painting and I just fell in love. I mean, I just absolutely loved it. And I still, I still love, I still incorporate drawing. It's really important into my abstract work. So I'm really glad I had that foundation. But um, yeah, I just, I love abstract painting. It's just, it's a wild Yeah, work. Yeah, we have in common, which you don't know, is that I studied abroad in Florence, Italy. Oh, really? Oh, cool. um, Yeah, and that's where my love of art started. And uh -huh. I was encouraged also to, you know, move out of my comfort zone. And I found this incredible teacher who lived underneath a church and that's where his studio was. And he invited 13 students and I was lucky enough to be one of them. And that's where I thought, wow, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I absolutely loved it. Yeah. And so um, I think when you are, you're right, when you're out of your comfort zone, uh, you never know what is going to come out. But I'm certain that only good things because all your pores and everything is so open and you're so ready to learn something new. And uh, that's the most important thing that we're never too old to learn something new and to develop into something different uh, that maybe you weren't before. And um, I think now more than ever, there is time and you can do so much with that time. And so um, going into um, finding your inspirations, um, where do you find your inspiration? Um, I would say mostly my inspiration comes, you know, just from daily walks outside, sort of noticing small things, small shapes, colors, you know, whatever kind of jumps out to me, I'll just take back in my mind. Um, but I'm also really inspired by other artists. I'm inspired by, um, I do a lot of listening. I, I was thinking about like, what kind of a learner? My daughter's studying psychology. And so we've talked about different learning styles and I'm like obsessed with podcasts and poetry. And so I think I get a lot of inspiration from things that I hear you know, words or phrases, um, almost as much I was as actually fascinated when I was reading that you um, get, you know, inspiration from documentaries on math and <laughs> manuals on Ikea and, uh, you know, insect wings, uh, poetry, like it's just so all over the map. It's <laughs> amazing. Like there's no rhyme or reason, but everything combined um comes to a result on your paintings which is that we're gonna see them hopefully um and you can talk about them that'd be sure. really great sure you want to so, see them now or, or yeah let's talk about your paintings now 
Okay, I just was going to show. Um, so one of the, I have a little show and tell here. Um, so I, after, um, after I had my kids and I sort of spent a long time, I used, I felt like I sort of used most of my creativity in just raising them. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have sort of like tapped out. Um, <laughs> but after, you know, they became a little bit more self-sufficient, I started, you know, I took a couple classes at a right. local museum and, um, and I met a friend who um, was also an artist and we started talking and I said, you know, I, I, I've always painted on canvas and she's, and I said, but I really love paper. I feel, I said, I feel like I'm, I'm continually treating the acrylics like watercolor. Like I keep making them what really watered down. And I keep, and I said, I'm really frustrated because I, I really love that. I miss working on paper, but I feel like it's not important enough. You know what but I mean? You like you, yeah, but you like the body of the acrylics and you didn't right. want to go into watercolor. You wanted to continue using, using the acrylics because you like the texture of the acrylics, but you were just right. watering them down. Right, yeah. So, and I like the, you know, the versatility of having the thicker paint and also, you know, putting something in them to make them look thinner. Um, so she suggested, she said, you know, I, um, her name's Gretchen Woodman. Hi, Gretchen. <laughs> we have the same first name. Um, she said, you should try this paper called UFO paper. Everyone's talking about it. And I was like, okay, well, that sounds cool. And so um, eventually I, you know, searched for it on online and got some. And so um, Can you tell us a little bit about what is the UFO paper for people that don't know or never heard of uh, the word UFO? Yep, UFO paper is, it's, it's called a paper because it's like thin like a paper, but it's actually um, plastic. I mean, basically it's like a sort of, it has like a, it doesn't have a tooth to it. It's very, very smooth, very slick, um, but it almost has like a velvety qual quality to it. So it's not shiny it's matte um but it's it's hard to explain without feeling it because it has like a right really but unique... does the application of the paint is it different if you do it on UFO than in canvas for example absolutely yeah so and you'll I... talk you can talk about that when you're showing us because yeah. we're going to have a little demo for you guys in a little bit so yeah. i'm excited for that so yeah. yeah go ahead and show us um the, the paper or whatever you have there if we're so going into your like, artwork. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna just turn off the comments uh, right now so everyone can see the artwork. And sure. then um, 10 minutes before we're done, I'll turn them back on. So if you have any questions, just keep them for yourself right now. And then at the end, we'll make sure that uh, Gretchen can answer those questions for you. And like always, um, remember all the materials and everything that she'll talk about I will list them in um, on my IGTV, on YouTube and Facebook. So it will be all over the place. So you don't have to worry about that. So um, go ahead, Gretchen, show us okay. your first painting. So this is just, this is just an older piece of mine when I was first um, trying out UFO paper. And you can see it has like, I have a much more watercolory. Um, so I was actually trying watercolors and I, and then I was like, okay, well, what else can I try on this? And so it, it, it does lend itself really beautifully to real watery. Can you bring it closer water. in so we can see it? There we go. Perfect. You can see it has a lot of, um, but, and this is one where I just had started thinking about a little bit more about like mixing together watercolors and pencil and there's even some markers I think in here too. Do you do you grab one one side of the paper when you're working so the drips come down? Like do you move your paper around or not really? I used to work on flat. I usually work on the flat surface. Okay. Um, so there's no there's no dripping. But I sometimes you know if, if the if the whatever paint or ink or um, watercolor I'm working in is real watery, sometimes I'll just move it around just to see what it does you know just because I know you like to work on large scale paintings yeah. um so uh you're gonna talk about how then you transfer the UFO into a stretcher so uh, it so you can hang it on a wall <laughs> yeah so I just because I became obsessed with this paper I mean I just it's totally different 
way of thinking almost because it is waterproof. So it's like, it messes with your mind because you think I'm working with water-based paints, but yet the paint is staying on there. But I could also re-wet it and completely wipe it away. For the most part, most paints, most watercolors and gouache will completely wipe And the mark making stays pretty, pretty sturdy there. Like you can see the mark making, like you can really tell all the details and, um, and so please set, show us the next one so we can see what we're talking about here, uh, applying the paint in different um, densities, I guess. Yeah, let me grab the other one. Yeah, so this one, this is a, a one I did last week. So this shows a little bit more um, layers of the paint. You can see um, this is sort of a more thick application right here. Um, and it's silver, right? Yeah, this is like a metallic -y bronze, I guess. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, I can see the shine in there. And, and um, yeah, there's lots and lots of layers on here. So um, you choose your palette before actually starting your paint, uh, your painting? Sometimes, um, yeah, I try to like make a decision because otherwise I'll just go crazy. I'll just reach for every single tube. I <laughs> like, Ooh, and then I'll add some orange. And I mean, I, I, I have to limit myself a little bit. <laughs> yes, yes. And so, it's, it's, yeah, I think, um, you know, you, you found your own voice. I can tell that, you know, you have a thread that um, speaks from one painting to the next. And I think that you have found this language that you can apply from one painting to the next. And you're informing yourself um, every time to continue into the next piece and the next piece. And, um, you know, a lot of artists that I've been in touch with, some of them, they don't have that language that, you know, communicates one with the other. And they're so concerned that they haven't found that voice that, you know, that they are, it needs to be one language. and. I happen to disagree. I think that, you know, if you find it, that is amazing. And if you can keep that, that is incredible. But if you don't, it's okay. Because as a person, we grow and we learn things every day that we want to apply and play with. And you can never lose that, you know, that play um, child inside of you um, to explore new things. Absolutely. Um, so for like beginners, I think that, you know, that they should just, you know, start playing and not have any, you know, pressure, absolutely. you know, what, yeah. do you, do you agree on that? Absolutely. I think, you know, I heard someone say, just make as much art as you can, because then you'll, every time, like you said, every time you make something, the next piece is informed by the one you made, you know, you made something, it didn't work out, you hated it. And that, that's almost sometimes better because then you know, okay, I'm not going to do that again. Um, or maybe I'll try it a little bit differently. Or I think when you make like a piece that you're super happy with, sometimes it's like, okay, now what do I do? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's better almost to have the um, sort of uncomfortable pieces that you haven't quite figured out yet um, and then go back to them maybe or just keep right. making as much work as possible. Yeah. Um, and I think to grow as an artist, you must rediscover your work each day. Like you have to like, uh, you know, just be reminded of all the possibilities out there and just rediscover your own work. And, um, and that keeps the appetite, the appetite to keep going and to do certain things because you're cons constantly in awe of what you're finding in your own work. So yeah. I think that's very, very important for all of us to keep in mind that just, you know, to keep that surprise, you know, and yeah. keep that wow moment and, and actually really take that wow moment and say, okay, I love this and kind of pat yourself. We're sometimes so hard on ourselves yeah, that we need yeah. that patting on the back from our, from ourselves and say, you know what, it's, this is good. This is really good. Yeah. And it's fun. I mean, it's real. It, it, it's challenging, but when it's, when you are having that moment of, oh, I wonder if I tried this and then you try it and it is like, 
whoa, I did not expect that <laughs> to happen. <laughs> exactly. Great. Exactly. Yeah. So what do you, how do you approach a, a, a white piece of UPO paper? How do you start? Okay, well, I'm going to bring you over to my demo table because I'm just going to show you how, like, great, quickly, how, I'll process, how I process through a blank I'm canvas. super excited. Okay. I'm super excited. Can't wait. I'm going to bring you over. Anyway, a little panoramic view. Oh, we my... forgot to say that Gretchen works in her, in, well, we did say she has her studio and has always had her studio at home. So yes. um, very convenient at this time in our lives. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay, so, um, so here's just a blank, sorry, blank piece of UPO paper. And I actually do work on Canvas too. I've started branching out because, um, you know, it's good to mix things up. Can you um, show us how it folds? Is it easy to fold? Is it a, like, yeah, it is. Yep. So okay. it's so there's different weights to it too. Like this is a this I forget what weight this is, but you can get it thicker than this, and it okay. also comes in translucent. Okay. Um, have you worked in translucent? I have. I I don't love it. Actually, the surface is a little waxier. Yes. Um, but, I have found that too. Yeah. Yeah. But um, oh, do you? But you can one? create many layers with it too. So it's actually. You know, it's a different kind of paper, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm not, like I said, I'm, I tried it once. I didn't, like, I kept, I wanted the easy thing. I wanted to go back to what I knew, yeah. but I'm always willing to try, you know, new things. Yes. And try yes. um, so I was just going to show um, a little bit about how Yupo does with pencil because okay. it's very buttery. Um, and also I, in college, I had a professor who challenged us during a drawing class to um, work with our non-dominant hand. And so I'm right-handed, but I tend to draw with my left hand because, I don't know, it's, it's just better for me. <laughs> it makes that's, me slow down a little that's bit. That's great. Yeah. You can work yeah. with both hands. That's amazing. Yeah, sometimes. Because you don't have control. <laughs> yeah, much less control. And I feel like... Um, I think probably, you know, that whole right brain, left brain, like I think your right brain gets accessed a little better with your left hand and it's yes. a little bit more spatially. So I was yes. just going to show some. So here's, you know, if I, when I'm starting a piece, yes, I actually hate the blank canvas. I know some artists love it. They're so excited, but I want to like get rid of it as quickly as possible. <laughs> so I'll just, so I'll just start with some pencil lines. And I'm, like I said, I love to draw. So I'm looking at some flowers right now. And so I'll just like sort of start like a, you know, like a line drawing of a flower, um, maybe blow it up a little bit, make some marks. And I'll say, okay, well, I love the shape of this, you know, this leaf right here. And I'll just, you know, whatever. So that um, is how I start. Usually a piece just get some marks, get some like idea of how I want the composition to be laid out. And what's cool is the pencil, I don't know, can you, is, can you see that pencil okay? I'm going to make yeah, it Yeah, right yeah, you can actually see it's, um, it's even more uh, visible than probably on a canvas. Yeah, it's, and it's very smooth. So it's just, just like paper, regular, you know, printer paper or, um, you know, any kind of not, not watercolor, whatever, the, I forget the difference between. What happens when you add water to the pencil? Does it, does it? Yeah, so, the... so you can wipe it away. Mo I mean, well, you can wipe some of it away. Um, so you almost like an eraser. So like the places where I pushed really hard aren't coming off, but I don't know if you can see there's now some little yeah. ghost marks right there. Yes. And I'm like, for me, the ghost marks are, I'm like obsessed with them. I'm just super. Because there's so much part of it. It's creating um, layers that yeah. we will later see. So yeah. Uh, the beauty of the UPO is, like you said, it's plasticky. So with just a, a towel with water, you're removing something, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, to me, the mind game with UPO is constantly thinking, what do I want to stay and what will be, could be taken away or scraped away or lifted off with water? So I found that um, there are these... 
I've used the only things that I can get to stay are certain, you know, as you know, certain pigments are stronger. Yeah. Um, so for the most part, most, you know, alcohol based inks will stay. Okay. Um, so I, so while, when I'm starting a piece, I'll kind of mark out some drawings. Um, I'll mark out how I want the composition to be generally, which I change my mind constantly. Um, mm -hmm. But in the beginning, I'll kind of get a basic idea. And then I'll start thinking about where do I want, what do I want the under layers to be? Um, what do I want to stay? So then I'll start thinking in terms of like, how can I make a color stay throughout the whole thing that if I put a layer on top of it, uh, it and I lift up some of that, it'll, you'll see the color underneath. So ink works straight for that. So here's, this is a, a Blick marker refill. Okay. Is it alcohol uh, based or just, is it? It ink? is alcohol based. It is alcohol, is alcohol based. based. Okay. Yep. I like the acrylic inks too, but um, they don't stain quite as well. Okay. <laughs> um, so here's, you know, so I'll just, sometimes I'll just take a paper towel and just kind of smear it around to make it stain. And, you know, I'll say, okay, I want to follow that line. And so now I've got some color. Yes. And I know that I can, while this is still sort of damp, it's drying really, really fast. Um, this you can, with um, rubbing alcohol, you can um, get some of it off. So if I, you know, just spray this, you right. can see it's kind of beading up there. Yeah, totally. Wow. Yeah. And so I can kind of like, you know, wipe some of it away, but there's still like that pale pink there. Yes. Yes. So you get very different values when you apply um, the alcohol and remove it. Yeah. So um, the last part of this part of the demonstration I was just going to show you is, um, so what's another cool thing with how that this was one of those um, mistakes or surprise moments was I realized, you know, this alcohol ink base now acts almost like you can do a resist. Yeah. So I'm going to take some watery gouache. This is just, I don't know how you pronounce this brand, Holbein. I think so. I, mean, yeah. I think it is. Yep. Um, and then when I put it on top, see how it's resisting? Yes. Where the ink is. But when I do it on the regular Yupo, it's just going to go on normal. Wow. Look so that, that makes it really cool. It's super fun. It's so <laughs> cool. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I love my job. Yes, yes. So I just wanted to show, you know, just hey, that'll be a nice base for a painting. And sometimes I'll just let it dry or I'll just, I'm not very patient. Usually I just keep working until um, I'm at a point where I have to go take the kids somewhere or something. So. Exactly. Um, so I don't then know much... after that, where do you go with that? Um, so I would probably start pulling out um, acrylics and, um, you know, putting on heavier layers, maybe doing some more drawing. I have all these um, alcohol based markers. So I might go in and do some more drawing with both pencil and the markers. Um, I do love you find that you have more control that way than using a brush. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, in terms of like spreading. Yeah, because it's just like another drawing. Um, another drawing tool. So you can just, you know, make, make, make the ink go exactly where you want it to go. Okay. Um, but I wanted to show um, how gouache works on you, Paul, a little bit more. So these are dried color fields. So if you kind of put the gouache on um, just the, just the Yupo, obviously it's not doing a resist. There's no ink under here. Right. Um, but it makes a really beautiful um, texture. Texture, and also when you um, you can lift it off, and it makes this really pretty. Can you see that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So was that completely dried, and you just yeah, added this water is completely and that's what dry. Happens? Yep, this is completely dry, and um, I just added water, and now I'm gonna just kind of pull the paint off, and it's really kind of smoky. And that's so soothing. I love yeah. that. <laughs> it's not pretty. It actually, it actually kind of like works out a little bit like, um, like oils, you know, where they live longer, where your paint will live longer. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah. Like it, it can be re constituted. Reworked. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So and when I, you're done, do you, do you have to spray it with something specific? Yeah, definitely for, especially for the gouache or watercolor. Um, and even, I use these Posca pens. Yes. I love those. Yeah. These are, yes. Yes. these are really cool and they will re-wet um, if they get water on them. So yeah, I definitely, this is one of the beauties of Instagram is I was trying to figure out how to finish um, a painting on Yupo um, without glass. And I said, what can I do? I don't want to, I can't just put varnish on top of this because the varnish will take the oh, paint off. Right. Um, and someone said what they do is they spray varnish or spray it with a fixative first and then put varnish on top of that. Okay. And that, that, and that, that does it? Yep. Yeah. And it, and it does it, then it's really stuck here. So I was going to show just this, the different, remember how I mentioned a while ago about how different pigments act differently. Yeah. So here's wow. the dark green um, gouache. gouache. But it, it actually does stain the paper. So this will, it makes this beautiful sort of Robin's egg blue background. Wow. Yes. Isn't that pretty? Oh, it's beautiful. That I was also love that. Idea. I think I might have to try that. I love yeah. that color. Isn't that beautiful? This is it awesome. is. Well, the the possibilities are endless. It's just dark green gouache. Yes, and I will list all the materials um, when we're done. So, yeah. Um, yeah, this is this is really fascinating, Gretchen. Like it's super fun. It's like, how did I get this life? <laughs> 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 and look at the mark making that you're doing with just the brush in itself yeah so you can really you know you can you can um you know kind of like flick the water on and kind of you could spray it um that makes an interesting um sort of pattern have you sprayed it with alcohol directly into the wash and see what happens it's it, yeah it does make it beat up a little bit where the water yeah. um and let's see it I don't know. It, it seems to work. It might make it kind of greasy, but I think so. Is, I think it, it's just yeah. a very different reaction and it will, might be a little harder to work on, but I was yeah. curious to know what happens if you add the alcohol there. Yeah. It's still, it's still making it lift, but it's almost doing like a resist at the same time that it's lifting. But I like it because it's yeah. different, you know, within that, the greens, you know, it gives you again, another value within the green, which I'm, I'm really liking. Yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> so show us Gretchen, what, what do you do then with, um, uh, I don't know if you have another thing to show us before. Yeah. yeah so like I said, I, I, I love the way a stretched canvas looks on the wall and it's like, so nice because it becomes like a thing in itself yes um and so i was like i want to do this with my yupo paper that i'm obsessed with so um one day i was like well i'm just going to try stretching it and i'm definitely i am not an expert in this and of course anybody <laughs> who's watching if you have suggestions for how to do this better i would love to hear that um <laughs> So here's just some sort of standard stretch your bars. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just try stapling it. And it, it does, it staples. The only thing you have to be careful of is um, it will tear right where the staple is. Oh, oh. See, there's like a little. Yes, I can see so that. So if you're pulling it real tight, like you would a canvas. It will tear. You have to be careful. So um, I actually, I don't know if you can see, but there's like tape here. Yes. So I'll put tape down just to reinforce it so that I don't have to. So that's a, let's see, this is just a standard acid free artist tape that I got artist on tape. Amazon. Yep. Yeah. And um, so the only thing that's different than when you're stretching a canvas, you know, you would just like with the canvas, I don't know how, I mean, I'm acting like I, everyone knows how to stretch a canvas, but basically <laughs> you just wrap the canvas around the stretcher bars and start in the middle and work your way out with the staples. But what I found with Yupo is you, it doesn't actually stretch. So you just have to kind of pull it as tightly as you can. And also fold, sort of pre-fold the corners first. Okay. So you almost make like an origami fold before you do this. So I'll, if you can see that. Um, so I'll just sort of 
fold this before I staple it because once I get to this point, it's almost too late. Like there's not enough give for me to reach in there and make the fold. Correct. So you did you measure where the um, tape would be at this point? Um, no, I just sort of like did this and then felt where I kind of thought the staples would go and then Got I just it. <laughs> Got it. So you kind of go blindly into it, but you kind of feel it on yeah. the end of it, I guess. Right. And I could put tape on the other side. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or, or some sort of a double tape. So at least in the beginning, you know where it will land. Yeah. Um, I think for me, I don't, well, this is probably too much information, but I don't put tape on the other side because there's too much of a chance of getting like a dog or a cat hair stuck in the tape. <laughs> while I'm, while I'm trying, and I don't want people to see it. So does it affect at all on the other side when you're making that fold? Does it affect your painting or does it stay pretty stretched on the other, like on the, on the um, real artwork? You mean once it's, once I have the artwork done? Yes. So do you, you start? I'll do this the, first. Right. Yeah. Oh, so you, you do, you stretch it before you're going to paint oh, on it? Yeah. So now I have, of course, gouache everywhere. Um, okay. So you don't start flat and then stretch it. You stretch it and, and then you paint on it. Yes, I have done it the other way. Um, but it's almost like as if there's a lot, if the paint is a really, really thick, yeah. If I'm wrapping it around, sometimes it'll flake off. Yes. Um, unless it's varnished. Have you so, ever tried, like, if you had a canvas that you're not using and wrapping it on top of a canvas? Have you ever tried that? I haven't. Um, I wonder it, if the paper would, you know, react differently by having, you know, a canvas underneath. Probably not. Probably not. It does. I have had, I can't even tell you how many problems are. So I, you know, <laughs> so it, the only thing that's sneaky about Yupo is in the heat, it does warp. Oh. So if I'm worried that if there was something behind it that it wasn't glued to, you, it might like, you might see, like it might pucker. It might, yeah, you might have bubbles, bubbles or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, but it's, it, you know, I'm willing, I'm willing to try it. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. And yeah. let us know what, yeah. what happened. Sure. <laughs> so, um, can we, are, are we done with a demo, yeah. you think? Yeah, Okay, sure. let's, let me, um, we don't need to be. If you have something else to show us, please do. I would love to see all the materials that you have there and, and your artwork. Sure. I was just going to show, this is a finished piece that I did that gouache technique almost over the whole thing. Um, so here, I just did this, this sort of gray field. I covered the whole thing with the gray field and then I just wiped away places. Yeah, um, you, can, you can definitely see it really, I love the, the quality of it and the, you know, you get so many rich layers in there that it really has a conversation. You have line composition, you have texture, you have um, a lot of language that goes from one, one point to the other. So um, can you show us that painting um, with the bright colors? Yeah. That this one. Yes. Um, yeah, this one is actually on canvas. Oh. Uh, so this is a stretch canvas. But what I did was I collaged an old painting. This piece right here is Yupo. So this oh, is what did you use? Did you use medium? What did you use to attach that to? Yep, I used a heavy gel medium. Okay. And um, just brushed it underneath and a little bit on top. And um, it was great because like I said, I hate the blank canvas. So I put these pieces down first. There's another one here. I don't know if you can see there's the edge of it. I can see the edge. Yes, for yeah. sure. So yes. Yeah. So great to have something sort of already painted to start with, to work with. And um, I don't yes, know. Yes, because right away it gave you a composition probably. Um, yeah. And then you start it from there. I love that color palette. It's so fresh and uh, just beautiful to look at. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> very, very 70s, this avocado green. Yes. <laughs> but it works. 
It works yeah. so good, you know, it's, it's so nice. I love that. I love you. how you, yeah, how you create your very unique um, artwork and composition and, and all the materials. So if you want to show us your material, oh yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to show you one more because this is um, a technique I was going to, I don't know, I just spaced it out. I didn't show it to you, but um, one thing I did try a while ago was, I don't know if you can see this, but there's, um, let's see. Can you see there's like little yeah. tiny lines? Yes. Yeah. This is where I put sandpaper on. Let's see. Fit right here. This is sandpaper. So I scratched up the surface of the Yupo first. With the sandpaper? With sandpaper. And this is where the ink is actually sitting in the lines. Oh, interesting. So it so depends like on how deep you sand the paper, um, yeah. how it will absorb the paint. Yeah, I, I mean, I can show that to you right now if you want, or I don't know. Yeah, do let's do let's do a quick okay. demo on that. I think okay. that's, that is fascinating. Okay. I don't want to turn off the phone or the accent. I, don't know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. Okay. We would have to start another life. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I can so, see it. Here's Perfect. my thin paper. This is sort of like a not very fine grit. What is um, it? What number is it? Eight. Eighty. 80. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to sort of drag this across the surface. Okay. And then, so that's some straight lines and then I'm going to make some curly. I'm just sort of, oops, whoa. I'm just sort of roughing off the surface. And then I'm going to take some of this ink. And you can see, I don't know if you can see it bleeding yes. into the lines. Yes, yes, yes. Cool. Oh, so it just well, it will depend on which which way which direction you were sanding the paper. Right. I mean, so you're kind. Of, I guess you could probably have something down there first, and then do the line, so you kind of knew where you would. It's hard to see where you had sanded it. Right. But you can also use it almost like an. And etching. I saw you didn't apply a lot of pressure, did you? No, I just sort of dragged it. Oh, I'm getting some of my old green in there. Um. No, we just sort of dragged it across and it just sort of roughs up the surface. And then it gives you those lines. Yeah. That's incredible. I love that. Thank Isn't you for showing us that. Yeah, sorry, I forgot I was gonna do that. No, <laughs> can you can you put that closer in so we can actually sure. see the marks? Sorry, Gretchen, I'm making you. Oops, there we, there there we go. Are. No, I just pushed the button. Look at that. Wow. Sorry about that. That's incredible. Oh, I that love cool? that. Thank you for teaching us this. This is amazing. Yeah, that's a newer thing I've been trying is the sandpaper. And it would be fun to try all, yes. different, uh, all different grits. I think it will be really cool to go like, you know, like, I don't know, even like uh, 30 or something when it's really gritty and see what happens, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so will you um, tell us a little bit about giving us some tips or lessons for people at home right now that are starting to think about painting or um, have been painting and you have some great adv advice on how you um, create your work? Yeah. Um, I would just say, like we talked about before, making um, as much as possible, making as many pieces. I'm um, gonna turn back on the comments. So right now would okay. be a great time to ask questions if you have any. Yeah, I, I think the, I loved, I heard an artist interview once where she said she has three different piles. You know, she has like the pretty okay pile, like the meh pile and the like crap pile. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then, you know, you just sometimes you go back to those, just make piles and piles of art, and then you go back to those piles and maybe you change your mind. The pieces that you thought weren't that great, maybe you can rework them or, um, but whatever, just make as much art as possible. I think. And um, another thing I'd say is, okay, so it's expensive, but I would say buy the best quality materials that you can. Um, you know, paint is not cheap you know, canvases. I mean, it just, it's, but I think you feel better when you use really good quality pigments. It's not so frustrating. Um, I mean, just- They're asking which ink did you use? 
Oh, um, that's the from the squirty marker thing. Yes. So that's, yeah, that's called Blick Marker Ink Refill, I think. It's just yes. from Blick Online. Yes, and like um, I said, I will I will make sure that we list all the materials. But yeah, keep going on like you know uh, suggestions or in, you know just inspire our viewers. Yeah, I would say another thing I've learned is it's like really 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 important to like you're doing now is just to find other artists that you can talk to and ask questions to and um I have a, a little group of there's three of us who meet um once a month and that's Poppy Dodge and Megan Woodard Johnson and which they're gonna be joining me I'm so yeah. excited <laughs> yes they're awesome yes I'm so excited and they you know we just have all these different avenues that we're constantly like texting each other you know and um saying I got this weird email what do you think or you know what do you think about licensing just these little things that pop up as artists you know I mean we don't know what we're doing so it's like if someone else has been through it it's like really helpful to be able to so I would say reach out to people as often as you can um yeah yeah and the next question that we have is that if the gouache watercolor or acrylic that is it's it's not the acrylic wash so there's like there's like acrylic wash and then there's like opaque watercolor gouache and the one i was using was not the acrylic wash it was so, the opaque yeah because the acrylic okay. wash will okay. act more like acrylic and will actually stay once it's dry you won't be able to wipe it away Right, exactly. Is that question? So, um, yeah, 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 for sure. And um, so tell us, Gretchen, where can we find you? Where, so tell us everything about your social media, your website, where can we, where can we find you? Sure. I'm on Instagram. That's sort of where I'm the most active. Um, and that's at Toddy Pond Designs. Um, and then I have a website, which is toddypondesigns.squarespace.com. And I have a Facebook account, but I'm mostly, that's just like personal. I don't really post too much about my art on there. Um, and that's it. I mean, I, I actually, you know, if you're local, I have galleries that I'm in sometimes and I have a gallery in Atlanta, but if you want to see what I'm working on, you know, today or tomorrow, every day, every day, <laughs> it's Instagram. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And please, um, you know, if you have any more questions, send them to me, send them to Gretchen. She will be happy to um, respond to anything that you, uh, that, you, um, that you have and any questions. And uh, I can't thank you enough for joining me today. It was so fun. We learned so much. I love your studio and I love your work. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye, Bye everyone. Soon.